Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Emmett and today I'm going to help you understand every single button on your Nikon Z6 II. So when I got this Z6 II a few months ago, even though I was coming from a different Nikon camera, I was honestly pretty confused at first and just recently I found another button on here that I actually haven't been using. There are a ton of buttons on this camera, which is really great. It's nice to have a physical hardware button for things so that you can have that muscle memory and not have to dig into the menus for things that you use frequently. But at first it can be very confusing as well. So today I'm going to try to help demystify that a little bit. I'm going to walk you through each button on the camera. I'm going to show you what that button does. And I'll also show you how you can customize a few of the buttons on this camera to do uh, um, your own custom actions. So at this point I'm just going to get behind the camera so that you can see the, the Z6 II really well. And I'll just show you each of those things. Alright, so I've got my Nikon Z6 II right here, and first off, on the top, you've got of course the shutter button right where you'd expect, and it has the on-off switch built into it. I really like the way that Nikon does this. It's super easy to flip this switch on when you're ready to take a picture. There's three buttons right behind that. There's first off the record button right here which will start a video recording when you are in video mode. When you're in photo mode, by default instead, this will hide all of the info from the display on the back of the camera so that you can see just what you're taking a picture of, which is very helpful if you're trying to get a clear view of your setup. That's something that I use a lot. Next to that, you have the ISO button. If you press this button and hold it, you can use the front dial on the camera to change it between auto and manual ISO, or you can use the rear dial on the back of the camera to adjust that actual ISO level. To the right of that is the exposure compensation, and you can press and hold that down and use either one of those two dials to adjust the value. On the front of the camera, right next to the lens, we have two function buttons. Now these buttons uh, come pre-programmed with a couple of default features, but they can be reprogrammed by going to Menu, the Custom Settings menu, Controls, and Custom Controls. And you can set those up to do one of a number of different functions, whatever is most helpful for you in your routine. There's two of those right there. I currently have one of them set up to open the playback menu so that I can see the image that I just took without having to move my hands when I'm taking a picture. And I have the other one set up so that I can change my autofocus modes very quickly and easily. But you can set them to whatever is easy for you. On the top left here is a dial for different modes. You'll need to press down the lock in the center of the dial in order to rotate it. In addition to the standard modes that you would expect, there are three user preset modes available, which you can set from another mode um, or from themselves by selecting uh, the settings on the camera itself and then opening up the menu, selecting the setup menu, and then selecting save user settings. You can pick out which one of the user profiles that you would like to save that to, U1, U2, or U3. And those are different depending on your photo and video mode as well. So that's very helpful to save some settings that you need to get back to quickly. And so you'll want to figure out some settings that are useful to you that are common and set those up. Below that dial right here, we have of course our playback button and our delete button, which will let you playback pictures in your uh, memory card and also delete those just like you would expect. To the right of the viewfinder, as I just showed you, there is this switch here, which switches you between photo mode and video mode. Some of the settings and layout change when you flip that switch, and so it's really quick to be able to get from taking a picture to taking a video and having all of the settings that you might use for one or the other saved, since those are generally different depending on what type of media you are recording. In the center of that, we have this little disp button 
or which stands for display and pressing it will just change the uh, information that's available to you on this monitor so you can cycle through some different display modes to the right of that we have the AF on button uh, this can be customized in the menu to lock the focus and exposure or to use it for back button focus below that is this little joystick there are some customizations um, available for this, but by default, it essentially behaves the same as the arrows and OK button right below it. In both cases, you can use it to move the autofocus points around to cycle through images that you've taken in the playback and things of that nature as you would expect. However, having both the joystick and the OK button wheel seems a little bit redundant to me. I kind of wish that Nikon had saved the space where this OK button is and put in some more function buttons or something of that nature there so that we would have a little bit more ability to customize the camera to our workflow and just use the smaller joystick for the other controls since they essentially are doing the same thing. Now between the joystick and the OK button, we have this info button, which I use a lot while I'm shooting and likely you will too. When you press that, it opens up this shooting menu here, uh, which has a lot of different customizable actions. You can change these to different things in the settings. If you just go to menu, to the custom settings menu again, to controls, and to the customize eye menu section. You can set up for either photo or video in different sections of the menu, what you want to be available to you in that info section. This is just the dozen different things that I have selected at the moment, but there's a whole bunch of different things to choose from so you can select whatever is most useful to you and put it in that info menu. Moving down to the bottom, we have these zoom in and zoom out buttons, which of course behave as you would expect. Next to them is the menu button, which I've already showed you a couple times and also behaves as you'd expect to open up the menu. Below that is this dedicated button right here for setting your burst or timer mode. Now, this is a button that I wish that you could customize, but unfortunately you can't. Um, because this is not a setting that I change that much. Usually I leave my camera in burst mode and I just press and release the shutter instead of holding it if I want a single picture. I do occasionally change that mode to use timers or single shutter, etc. But it doesn't, it isn't something that I change frequently enough for it to really seem like it warrants this dedicated hardware button on the camera. I wish I could set that to be something else and maybe put this uh, burst setting in the info menu, which in fact is where I had it until very recently when I realized that this dedicated hardware button actually existed. Now finally, on the left side of the viewfinder right here, we have this button which lets us toggle between viewfinder and display modes. So if you press it, you can switch between uh, viewfinder only, uh, monitor only, automatically switching between the two or prioritizing the viewfinder. Um, however, you can limit those options in the settings and I have limited mine to only being viewfinder only or automatic switching since those are the only two options that I use. That gives me a lot less things that I have to toggle through when I'm using that button. And then on the right side of the viewfinder as well is a small knob right here which adjusts the zoom level of your viewfinder if you're having trouble seeing it depending on your eyesight and things of that nature you can adjust that knob. That's the sort of thing that you'll only change once when you first get the camera and then never touch again. So that has been a full walkthrough of all of the buttons on the Nikon Z6 II. Overall, I do really like the buttons on the camera, um, but like I said, I do wish that there was more customization available to you. I would love to see more buttons that are customizable as well as more customization options for those buttons so that you can really kind of integrate your workflow into the hardware even more. There is some degree to which you can do that now and that's really nice, but I really would love it if it was kind of every button can do everything and you can really customize it as much as you want it. 
Like I said though, I do like the buttons on this camera. They all work pretty well and are easy to access um, ergonomically and it's pretty intuitive and good for your muscle memory once you get used to those buttons. And also, the buttons are not entirely different from what you will find on other Nikon cameras, so if you're someone who does use Nikon cameras, um, some things obviously will feel familiar to you as you move throughout the camera. So hopefully this helps anyone who might be um, either considering getting a Z6 II and wondering what the features are available on it or someone who is um, new to their camera and trying to figure out those buttons. Uh, it can definitely be confusing at first, I know it was for me, but once you get used to it, it does work really well and it's quite easy to use. If this did help you, don't forget to hit the like button on your way out and to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss more good videos in the future. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.